guys, Slug Bells here. So, uh, I want to give you a quick update before we start this review. Um, a welcome to my Star Wars series. I'm going to be, if you hadn't been on my social networking sites like Twitter and Instagram or Facebook, you would know that I am starting my Star Wars series. You know, me reviewing Star Wars films leading up to The Last Jedi, which comes out on December 15th. I can't wait for that movie to come out. So, oh, I'm going to be starting my Star Wars series, as I already mentioned, reviewing every single Star Wars film from The Phantom Menace all the way to Return of the Jedi. So, to kickstart off a my series of Star Wars films, let's talk about Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, was directed by George Lucas and stars Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor, uh, Natalie Portman, and a, a lot more actors and actresses. Oh, and one last thing before we get into the review. This is going to contain spoilers. I warned you. This movie came out in 1999, and it was the first Star Wars film I have watched for the very first time uh, since I was, like, either in my early teens or my mid-teens. Probably my early teens when I watched The Phantom Menace for the very first time in my life. It was my introduction to the whole Star Wars thing, this this gigantic pop culture thing known as Star Wars. And it was very pleasing, a very pleasing experience to have. So this movie starts off with a starship that contains a two of the Chancellor's ambassadors. And those ambassadors for the Chancellor just so happens to be two Jedi Knights, Qui-Gon Jinn, played by Liam Neeson, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, played by Ewan McGregor. And I vaguely remember the first time I saw that opening scene where they were landing on that uh, giant uh, droid control ship. It was pretty chilling for me as uh, back I watched it back then. I was pretty intrigued uh, when I first saw that opening scene. Um, for some reason, I don't know what is. Uh, <laughs> So Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi were, like like I said, already uh, arrived at this uh, droid control ship just to get the uh, Viceroy. And the Viceroy were, in, uh, were informed by the Emperor himself that, the Jedi, that these two Jedi Knights are infra infiltrating their droid c uh, control ship. And from there on, uh, this movie pretty much started off pretty solid. I will say that, just from uh, the first, I would say, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, I would say. And then after the first 10 minutes, in, or 15 minutes ended, I, the second act kind of bored me. Because once the second act has started, you get almost nothing but uh, a t a walking and, t and characters walking around and just talking with each other uh, you you don't you, you you actually don't get a lot of action in the second act you probably do at the end of the second act with the pod race uh, and we will get into that very soon but the first the, the start of the second act of the phantom is really dragged and that is due to the pacing and a lot of other things. The dialogue uh, I uh, just noticed, uh, I couldn't help but notice, was pretty stale. Felt pretty stale and dry. Uh, like there was, there wasn't like a single line that was pretty much that memorable. Even from the characters from like, say, Qui-Gon Jinn or Obi-Wan Kenobi or any other um, characters that you kind of liked. One of them, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And just from George Lucas himself, I feel like he has problems uh, with doing his own writing during the prequels, uh, starting this one. Um, and yeah, his the writing was kind of uh, shaking, uh, just kind of choppy. And then once Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn arrived uh, infiltrating uh, one of the... Uh, droid ships to arrive on a planet Naboo, uh, this is when we were introduced to Jar Jar Binks. Now, I want to give you my backstory of how I felt about Jar Jar Binks uh, went back when I was a little kid watching it for the very first time. I thought Jar Jar Binks was pretty funny. He was hilarious and I th thought he was very fun to watch. Rewatching it? 
Adão. You saved my again. Oh, man, I have no idea what they were thinking. And then once uh, the whole rest of the our, of our heroes um, uh, leave Naboo safely without any complications or being destroyed, uh, we get introduced to a uh, hands down. In my opinion, the best part of The Phantom Menace. And it's pretty much everybody's uh, best part of the entire film. Darth Maul. How is he so awesome in The Phantom Menace? How is he the one part of this movie that you can pretty much see yourself watching more often? How was he easily made this film better for you? Well, I will say this. He has a lot of great stunts. A lot of great stunts. The actor who, por who portrayed uh, Darth Maul was an excellent cast a casting choice. Uh, I forgot his name, but he... You, sir, kudos to you, man. <laughs> I love Darth Maul. He was an excellent villain. And he pretty much shine, uh, made everything about the Phantom Menace better uh, just from the action the uh, stunt work that he had to do uh, you know just from the jedi versus sith uh, fights between him and qui-gon jinn uh, which was awesome by the way i will get into that um <laughs> and we will get into more in about darth maul uh, uh, soon but let's get to the st uh, story on okay so our heroes uh, arrived at tatooine and this is the place where we also get to introduce the young Anakin. Yeah. The young kid who played the young Anakin. You'll never reach the outskirts in time. Sandstorms are very, very dangerous. The pod race scene, uh, let, or the pod race sequence. Let's talk about it. Um, <laughs> I didn't feel the emotional weight uh, that it was trying to give me. I didn't feel the intensity that it was trying to give me. I didn't feel like there wasn't at stake, that, like there were, weren't stakes that they, that this sequence has given me. There weren't enough stakes that it was wanting to give me uh, because it was edited in a way uh, that made me just don't really care about the pod race scene. It was something about that pod race uh, sequence, uh, just the way that it was edited and it was uh, directed, that just kind of bugged me and didn't really make me care. And another thing I want to point out a, a point out about this pod race sequence. There were a lot, a lot of left to right shots during the pod race sequence. As I was watching this pod race sequence in this movie, there were so many uh, uh, shots where the camera was, was like panning from left to right multiple times. In fact, it was so obvious that I actually had to uh, put my phone out and, and just start taking notes of how many sh uh, left to right shots were in this movie. I, I counted how many there were, and guess how many that I found that were in this movie? 21. Twen I found 21 left to right pod race sequence shots in this movie. 21. A lot of people at the time uh, when this movie came out didn't notice this. And it's kind of like George Lucas uh, wanted to, uh, to like uh, use the, uh, uh, the camera to pan from left to right because the other side uh, was not pretty much for George Lucas. And it's like, why George Lucas? Why would you need it to be on that exact same spot? Panning from left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right. Why? Just why? You don't need to do that all that much on the like left side. I mean, there was so much overuse of that left of, of left to right shots during that pod race. So anyway, uh, the pod race sequence was kind of weightless uh, as far as I'm concerned in terms of the editing and the, and how it was directed. And so our heroes get to arrive on this a, a planet filled with a lot of cities uh, where the uh, we can meet the Jedi for the first time, uh, like a Master Windu played by Samuel L. Jackson, and the one and only Master Yoda. Uh, they did all, they did nothing! Like, wh 
What? Well, why? They didn't even, like, uh, get up and help uh, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, to uh, hunt down the Darth Maul. Like, come on. Like, what? Such poor writing uh, that George Lucas has made. Like, <sighs> so yeah, uh, the Jedi refuse uh, to approve uh, Qui-Gon Jinn's training, and Qui-Gon Jinn had no choice but to have Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, train uh, Anakin. So our heroes arrived at the planet of Naboo, and our heroes have to, like, make an alliance with the Gungans. And the Gungans became allies with uh, with the people of Naboo, the, the queen of Naboo as well, uh, and they have to come up with plans to stop uh, the Trade Federation army uh, at Naboo. And then the epic showdown begins. Uh, we get uh, our shot where uh, the Gungans uh, walk out of the fog and then enter the battlefield against the droid army. And then you cut to another shot where uh, the whole the whole squad, uh, rather, uh, take care of the whole a palace of Naboo, if you will. As I already said, I really thought the pod race sequence was uninteresting, but I really couldn't believe how so uninteresting both battles were. Uh, the battles between the Gungans and uh, uh, the droids, and the battles between the droids and the uh, humans, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the humans of Naboo. Oh, and before I get into that fight scene between uh, between uh, those three, uh, I must say, he only had three lines in this entire movie. Three lines. In fact, I actually look up on Google to see how many lines uh, or words that Darth Maul has used in this movie, The Phantom Menace, and he only speaked 31 words and two lines. Tatooine is sparsely populated. If the trace was correct, I will find them quickly, Master. Move against the Jedi first. You will then have no difficulty in taking the Queen to Naboo to sign the treaty. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. Uh, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, stand their grounds against uh, Darth Maul. And it was so awesome to see uh, the fight between those three. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn facing Darth Maul. It was so awesome. I, If this movie... If The Phantom Menace uh, was pretty much the entire uh, uh, th uh, part of Darth Maul fighting uh, the two Jedi Knights, this movie would have been a whole lot better. Or at least make a story about Darth Maul trying to find uh, the two Jedi Knights, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, tracking them down and then uh, hunt them down. We could have got a better movie than The Phantom Menace. And so our heroes and their allies uh, won and Darth Maul was split to half uh, by Obi-Wan Kenobi and then Qui-Gon Jinn dies because uh, Darth Maul killed him uh, and stabbed him with a lightsaber. See ya yeah, guys, uh, I'm not like the kind of person that whenever I watch a movie that is that I feel like is a not so good movie, uh, I don't take crap uh, for ignoring the fact that there are at least a few good elements uh, for a movie like The Phantom Menace are. And there, and yes, I do mention that I do have positives to say about The Phantom Menace, one of them being John Williams' score. It was pretty good. It was really good as usual. And another positive is the one that I've already mentioned earlier on in this review, and that is Darth Maul. He was awesome. Uh, he was easily... Uh, the crowning jewel of this entire movie. As I already said, the humor one involving Jar Jar Binks was pretty stale and dry and not very good, as well as the dialogue and the characterization and the directing was kind of average, uh, as well as uh, the writing, although I will say the writing that George Lucas has made for this film was so... <sighs> wow. It was not good. So yeah, guys, um, I would say... Uh, now, I will say this, though. Uh, the Phantom Menace is not like Arrival bad or The Mummy 2017 bad uh, or Fant uh, Fantastic bad. It's not like... Uh, it's very far from being a terrible film. There are a few good elements that The Phantom Menace has that I pretty much found myself seeing. It's just that overall... I didn't think it really hold up as a Star Wars movie, and the feel that it gave me 
It didn't feel like a Star Wars movie at all. Uh, the Phantom Menace, I would say, is, is pretty much an average film to watch. Uh, it's neither terrible, but it's also not really all that great. So, with that being said, I'm going to give Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, a silver medal of honor. Anyway, guys, that is my review for Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. This is my review for Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace to kickstart off my series of Star Wars reviews. My next review is going to be for Star Wars Episode Two, Attack of the Clones. My review will be up next week, so be on the lookout for that. Also, I pretty much have an announcement, uh, an update that I want to give you guys uh, that I also updated when I was talking about uh, starting my Star Wars series. I'm also starting another series of reviews coming your way. And here's what uh, my series of reviews is going to be. It's going to be for Liam Neeson movies. That's right. I'm going to be reviewing at least every single film that stars Liam Neeson as a main protagonist, uh, from Taken all the way to Run All Night. I cannot wait to do that series, uh, as well as starting off this, ser uh, this Star Wars series that I'm doing, which I already did, but I'm still going to do it anyway. So, <laughs> anyway, guys, that's about all the update I will give you. It's just me doing my Star Wars series and my Liam Neeson series. So, anyway, guys, that's about it. If you guys enjoyed my review, please click the like button and comment down below to let me know what you think of Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, if you have already watched it. Did you like it? Did you thought it was okay? Or did you not like it? And if you enjoy what you've seen here and you want to see future videos from me, please click the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you never miss a video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this. Just one last update and that's it. Look out for my review for Thor Ragnarok uh, uh, the day before, t uh, the day after tomorrow. It's going to be up when I see Thor Ragnarok the day of its release. I'm going to be seeing it. I can't wait to see Thor Ragnarok. So be on the lookout for my review for Thor Ragnarok about the day after its release. So anyway, guys, that's about it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great week, Battle Squad. And as always, fight! the good fight. Peace!